Why do you think the Philippines is very vulnerable to extreme weather conditions? What makes the Philippines a frontliner in some of the most destructive typhoons? Which is a better source of tropical cyclone? Is it the water vapor, the land masses, or the ocean? Where do you think will evaporation be greatest? Is it near the equator or away from the equator? Do you think typhoons can form in latitudes away from the equator? Why or why not? Hello students, especially to all grade 8 students out there. Kumusta kayo? Welcome back to our YouTube channel. This is me again, Teacher Tin. Ang kasama mo, syempre, sa iyong science journey. So, nandito ulit tayo sa panibagong vlog, so panibagong lesson na naman tayo. So, again, if you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates in Science 8. For today's lesson vlog, we're going to discuss and we're going to learn how to trace the path of typhoons that enter the Philippine area of responsibility using the maps and tracking data. Hindi naman lingid sa ating kaalaman na ang ating bansang Pilipinas ay siya ang tinutinaturing na frontliner sa mga destructive typhoons na dumadating palagi. And we also know that the Philippines is very vulnerable to very extreme conditions. It's because of its geographical location. Ano ba pag sinabi natin geographical location? Saan ba nakalocate itong ating bansa? So kung makikita nyo sa mga mapa, napakalapit natin sa ocean, sa Pacific Ocean. Our country lies along the West Pacific Basin, which has the warmest ocean temperature in the world. And we all know that tropical cyclones are formed only in the warm water oceans near the equator. And they are formed in the ocean. At since malapit nga tayo sa Pacific Ocean, so talagang tayo ay frontliner sa mga matitinding bagyo na dumarating. And according to Pag-asa, around 20 tropical cyclones may enter the Philippine area of responsibility that may cause destructions to lives and properties. Alam natin na ang tropical cyclone na develop lang yan dahil sa water vapor. So kung may water vapor, saka lang form ang tropical cyclone. Pero hindi lahat ng parte ng ocean o ng karagatan ay, mak ay kaya makapag-produce ng water vapor. Ano ba yung tinatawag na water vapor? Where this is the gaseous phase of water at napuproduce lang ang water vapor kapag nagkaroon ng evaporation galing sa mainit na temperature. So, since hindi lahat ng parte ng karagatan ay kaya makapag-produce ng water vapor, or according to scientists, kinakailangan na magkaroon ng 26.5 degrees Celsius or mas mataas pa sa temperature na ito ang isang ocean para magkaroon siya ng water vapor or para makapag-produce ng water vapor. So, where do you think will evaporation be greatest? Is it away from the equator or near the equator? Okay, it's very obvious na syempre yung mga lugar na malapit sa equator dahil mas mataas ang temperature ng mga lugar na malapit sa equator. Okay, so I'll be showing you again the map of the track of typhoons of Agaton, Harurot, Yoyong, and Wani. Now, what can you say about the temperature of the bodies of water in the vicinity of the Philippines? Is it warm or is it cold? Okay, very good. It's very obvious that it is warm. It is the reason why the Philippines, our country, is prone to tropical cyclone. From these maps, you can see that tropical cyclones generally move in a northwest direction. Bakit? The reason is because 
there are large-scale winds that push the tropical cyclones in that direction. Katulad at kaparehas ito kung paano yung mga whirlpool ay maaring dalhin ng mga flowing stream. As you can observe, all four tropical cyclones struck the northern part of the Philippines. Now you know why the southern part of the Philippines is often untouched by tropical cyclones. Three of the tropical cyclones mentioned here weakened and died out near the land. Agaton dissipated in Luzon. Yoyong in Taiwan, and Waning near mainland China. This means that when tropical cyclones reach land, they die out because they are cut off from the warm ocean waters that keep them going. Okay, I'll be showing you some pictures that I want you to think and ask yourself how can you describe these pictures. Okay, so gusto ko na isipin niyo muna at uh, himay-himayin and you scrutinize this picture. At kayo muna ang humusga kung ano ba ang meron sa mga pictures na to. Okay, first picture. I'll give you five seconds to think. Okay, anong pinapakita sa picture na to? Okay, second picture. Okay, what do you think is inside the tropical cyclone? And number three, okay, would you kindly explain what the picture is all about? Okay, I'll give you time to think, and then afterwards, we're going to discuss what this picture is all about. Okay, in the first picture, makikita natin yung path ng tropical cyclone during the period of August 24 to September 8. So this picture shows the mean paths for tropical cyclones during the period of August 24 to, August, to September 8 and the numbers in each path represent the percentage of tropical cyclones which followed the indicated path. However, sa second picture, we can see the innermost part of a tropical cyclone. At last module, pinag-aralan natin yung mga parts or yung structure ng tropical cyclone. So when we say the innermost part of the tropical cyclone, and that is particularly the, okay, very good, the eye. Okay, yung mata ng bagyo. Obvious naman sa picture na to. However, in the third picture, as we can see, this is the structure. The structure of a tropical cyclone and the structure of the tropical cyclone it shows that the eye there is the rain bonds and there is the eye wall in this picture we can see the structure of a tropical cyclone the eye that is relatively clear that is surrounded by the eye wall that has the strongest winds outside the eye wall are the rain bands that spiral around the cyclone Okay, in our next activity, we're going to perform a simple activity wherein we're going to track the tropical cyclone Sendong using uh, this information. And then we're going to plot each longitude or the longitude and the latitude in with the PAR or the Philippine Area of Responsibility. Okay, from this table, may makikita kayo na mga words or mga acronym, kagaya ng ADV, it means the advisory. So we also have the lat long, which stands for latitude, and the other one long, which is for the longitude. Okay, we also have here the time, and then meron kayong makikita dito na Z. So kagaya dito sa first table, so okay, yung first row dito sa table natin, so we have one, which stands for the advisory one, so we have 6.00 so that is your latitude okay and we also have 145.10 that is for the longitude and we also have 1213.06 z okay, which stands for this is for the time and for the month and day so 12 stands for december and then 13 that is the day december 13 
and we have 0, 6, Z. Okay, ano yung letter Z dyan? Okay, that, st that stands for Zulu time. At kung titingnan natin dito sa table, we have here 12 slash 13 slash 06 Z 25. Okay, so yung 12, 13, it stands for December 13, which is the month and day kung kailan nila minonitor itong si uh, Tropical Cyclone Sendong or tinatawag din na Tropical Cyclone Washi or the international name of Sendong. Okay, yung 06 Z, it stands for the time. At yung 06 Z, ang ibig sabihin na naman ay 6 o'clock in the morning. So, pag may nakita kayo naman na 18Z, it stands for 6 o'clock in the afternoon. Bakit naging 6 o'clock sa afternoon? Kasi, di ba 12? So, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So, ano ba yung 12 na yun? 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, 6 o'clock in the afternoon. At yung 00Z, it stands for 12 o'clock in the morning. So, yung madaling araw. Bakit po ganito? So, kung mapapansin nyo sa table, monitor nila si Tropical Cyclone every 6 hours. Okay, at yung Z na nakalagay ngayon, it only indicates the time. Because according to JTWC or the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, the U.S. military refer to the UTC time as Zulu time. Okay, or the, the Z time. Now, ano ba yung tinatawag na... Ingay. Now, ano ba yung tinatawag natin na UTC? What do we mean by UTC? When we say UTC, it means Coordinated Universal Time. And this UTC, it means the basis of civil time. Anong ibig sabihin? This is the primary time standard by which the world regulates clock and time. Okay, so print ko na itong gagamitin nating map na meron dito. Uh, ano to? Okay, yung, yung nandito, so we have the latitude, ano, lahat ng paganto. And then we also have the longitude, dito naman pa. Okay, in this activity, we're going to list the latitude and longitude, or the lat long, in the table below to track the location of Sendong. So, let us plot each lat long pair on the map with the par. Okay, this happened during December 2011. Okay, so we're going to plot first this 6, which is the latitude, and we have 145.10 for the longitude, okay, in the in the month and day of December 13, okay, ang time natin is 6 o'clock in the morning, okay, and it is a tropical depression, okay, and since ang ating map ay hanggang 135 lang, so, dinagdagan ko na siya para maging hanggang 144. Since we are looking for 6 for the latitude and we have 145.10. So, nasaan ba dito ang 6? Okay, 6 for the latitude. So, ito yung 6 na latitude and we are looking for 145.10. Okay, nandito yung 6. So, ang latitude natin is 145.10. So, medyo lumampas lang siya ng konti dito. This is the longitude. Ano kasi yung pataas? So, ito yung latitude na 6. So, saan ba sila nag-meet? So, dito sa part na to. So, sabihin, ito yung uh, 12, this is the 12, 13, 6, Z. Next, we have 640, and then 143.30, noong 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay? So, we're going to plot it. 640, 6.40, so nandito sa siya sa medyo taas. And then, 143, so ibig sabihin medyo lumapit na siya ng konti. So, andito siya sa part na to. Okay, so this is... 100, ah, uh, no. This is 12, 13, and then 12, Z. Or 12, 12 o'clock. Okay. Next. Okay, 3. 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock today. 6 latitude, 141.70. Okay, doon naman tayo sa December 14. Okay, 18, Z, or yung time natin is 6 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, 6. And then 141. 141. So, na ito naman siya. Okay. So, medyo dito siya sa part na to. Okay. So, medyo bilisan na natin. Next ay 590. So, alam niyo na naman kung paano mag-flat, ba? 590. So, nandito siya sa medyo taas. Malapit na siya sa 6. Tapos, 140. And then, 140.60. So, nandito yung sa part na to. Okay. 
So, idire-direksyon na natin. One eternity later. Okay, finally, natapos na natin ang ating tracking the track of Tropical Storm Sendong. So, ayan na. So, kung makikita nyo, itong line na red, so, ito yung ating line ng Philippine Area of Responsibility. So, itong mga dot, ito kung saan nag-travel si Tropical Cyclone Sendong. Kung mapapansin nyo, may mga point siya na wala sa par. So, ibig sabihin, yung yung nandito, tinatawag lang ito na tropical depression. Since, hindi pa nga rin siya nakaka-enter sa power, hindi pa binibigyan ito ng pangalan. So again, si Tropical Cyclone Sendong, nagsimula lang siya sa area na low pressure. At syempre, dahil nga siya ay low pressure area pa lang, hindi siya binigyan ng pangalan. And once na nakapasok na siya sa Philippine Area of Responsibility, so this is the time that Pag-asa gave it a name at ito nga yung tinatawag na na Sendong. Okay, and internationally, ang pangalan nga nito ay Washi. Okay, now, the question is, Okay, when did Sendong enter the par? So, kung mapapansin nyo dito, nilagyan ko siya ng 5 degree north and 135 degree east. So, ibig sabihin, ito yung, itong point na to, ito siya. Okay, so, lahat ng nasa region na to, that, that is the par. So, kung mapapansin nyo, alin lang dyan yung point na nakapasok na siya sa par or sa Philippine Area of Responsibility. ba itong point na to. So, kung babalikan natin yung ating table, okay, so, ito yung table na yon na 7.20 134.30 which is the latitude and the longitude. Okay, and mapapansin nyo nag-enter siya noong December 15 00 Z, ibig sabihin 12 o'clock time. So 12 o'clock in the midnight. So that is the only time that Sendo entered the part. Kasi ito yung point kung saan siya nagsimula. Now, the next question is when did Sendo leave the part? So if we're going to trace the path that Sendo traveled okay, so ayan yung naging travel niya and then this is the last time na namataan siya sa Philippine Area of Responsibility this point. So, ngayon, yung point na to, since ito yung next na lumabas na siya sa Philippine Area of Responsibility, nasaan po ba siyang latitude and longitude? Okay, kung mapapansin mo dun sa graph natin, okay, sa ating table, okay, eto siya. Okay, dun tayo sa 9.90 latitude and 114.60 longitude. Okay, tingnan nyo dito sa ating ano. Okay, yung area na to, so ito yung area kung saan, kung saan nandito yung area of responsibility natin. So, itong point na to, that is 5 degree north and then 115 degree east. Kung mapapansin nyo dito, so, in-encircle ko na siya. So, 9, ah, nasan yun? 9.90, that is the latitude and 114.60, that is the longitude. Noong December 18, 12 Z, ibig sabihin ito ay 12 o'clock in the afternoon. So, this is the time that tropical storm Sendong leave the par. Okay, dahil ito siya, oh, tingnan nyo, 9.90, so ito yung point na yun. Okay, and then 114, so yung sabihin, labas na talaga siya ng Philippine Area of Responsibility for the reason na nag-start lang naman ang ang line ng trop ng PAR or the par ay doon sa 115. And since 114 na itong line na to, so that is outside the par. So this is the time that Sendong leave the PAR or the uh, Fi Philippine Area of Responsibility. So very obvious naman kung anong direction siya nag-travel, di ba? Okay, northwest pa din. Kasi talaga namang ang bagyo ay northwest ang direction. At alam nyo na ang dahilan kung bakit siya northwest direction. Sendong brought torrential rains to Mindanao. May ibang lugar na nakareceive ng halos 200 mm of rain. So marami din ang naka-experience ng excessive rain, landslide, flash floods, at napakarami ang namatay dito sa tropical storm na Sendong. Sobrang dami rin ang mga na-damage na bahay, mga gusali, na halos umabot ng 2 billion pesos ang total damage nitong bagyong Sendong. Sendong started out in the Pacific as an area of low pressure. Because it was just a low pressure area, it was not given a name. Then, it intensified into a tropical depression. Again, it was not yet given a name because it was still outside the par. When it finally entered the par, it had already strengthened into a tropical storm. Since it was within the par, by then, Pag-asa gave it a name, Sendong, from its prepared list. Internationally, the tropical storm was called Washi. One thing about the tropical cyclones that we should watch out for are the strong winds. Okay, sa next activity, tingnan naman natin kung ano ang nasa loob ng tropical cyclone at sa ang part ba ng tropical cyclone, makaka-experience talaga tayo ng sobrang lakas na hangin. Ipapakita ako sa inyong larawan ng tropical cyclone. So, ito siya. Okay, yung nasa taas, ito yung nakikita natin na angle ng isang tropical cyclone. So, yung nasa baba naman, this is the cross section of a tropical cyclone. So, pag-aralan natin mabuti kung ano ba ang meron dito sa larawan na ito. In this picture, we can see the view of a tropical cyclone at an angle. So, there are two pictures here. Again, the first one is a view of a tropical cyclone at an angle. And then, sa bottom, we have here the cross-section of a typhoon. 
Now, as you can see in the second picture, it is like a slicing it in half and looking at it from the side. So, let us give our inference on how the typhoon generates its strong wind. Okay, so we have here also the table wherein we can see here location A, B, C, and D. Okay, and dito sa baba, makikita natin yung cross-section ng typhoon. Meron ditong A, B, C, D. Ibig sabihin na ito yung location. So now, okay, uh, the air pressure in millibars or MB is also written here. So sa A, location A, makikita natin na 930 MB, which is nandito siya, no? And then letter B, 960 MB, and then letter C, 980 MB, and then D, we have 990 MB. Now, ulitin natin kung ano bang ibig sabihin nitong nasa babang yan. Okay, so kung makikita nyo, itong gitnang to, this is the eye of the typhoon, yung mata ng bagyo. Okay, it is located... Okay, at the center of the typhoon. Okay, and then, yung dalawang nasa tabi nung eye, so yun, ito yung tinatawag na eye wall. Okay? So, balikan natin yung isang picture. So, itong dalawang itong malaki na nasa gitna nitong eye, so yun yung tinatawag natin na eye wall. Okay? And then, yung nasa, nasa gilid ng eye wall, yung katabi niya, yung remaining na yan, yan ang tinatawag natin na rain band. Remember that the tropical cyclone has three parts. Okay, yung structure niya, meron tayong eye, eye wall, and rain band. So, kung babalikan natin itong picture na to, okay, as, as you have learned in this activity, okay, yung lowest pressure ay makikita natin dun sa eye of a tropical cyclone. Ito yung dahilan kung bakit mahina lang at minsan wala pang ulan dito sa gitna or dito sa gitna nga ng bagyo ng tropical cyclone which is yung tinatawag natin na ay So ngayon, paano mo i-compare yung air pressure ng A, B, C at D? So that's very obvious that doon sa A, kung saan nandoon yung bag yung mata ng bagyo, nandoon yung pinakamababang air pressure. Remember that in fact, all tropical cyclones have low air pressure at the center. And and this is the reason why the air in the surroundings move toward the eye. Kung babalikan nyo yung pinag-aralan nyo ng grade 7, air moves toward low pressure areas. Okay? Now, uh, let us uh, locate E. So, meron tayo ditong E at meron tayong F. Okay? So, location E is within the eye of the tropical cyclone and Location F is within the clouds surrounding the eye. Nasa paligid ng mata ng bagyo. The clouds at F make up the eye wall. Kitang-kita nyo naman, di ba? Balikan natin dito. So, yung F yung nandito, ano, ito siya. Okay, yung F, yan yung nasa palibot ng eye wall. Now, the wind speeds at the two locations are the following. So, tingnan natin. Ayan. Ito yung E, ayan. Itong E at F, pinapakita naman dito yung wind speed, yung lakas nung hangin na meron tayong dito ang kilometer per hour. Dito sa E, we have 10 kilometer per hour. Okay? And then sa F, we have 200 kilometer per hour. Ngayon, if we're going to compare the wind speed within the eye and the eye wall, okay, sige nga, ano masasabi nyo? What can you say about the wind speed between location E and location F. That's very obvious na mas malakas talaga yung kanyang wind speed dito sa F. Kitang-kita naman ano, kasi nga sa eye of the of the typhoon or the eye of the tropical cyclone, talagang mahina lang dyan. Dun, dun nga sa kabila, ba? Mas mahina din yung kanilang air pressure. Pagdating sa wind speed, ganun din. Mahina pag naandun sa mata ng bagyo. Okay, remember, that at the eye of the tropical cyclone, itong nandito sa gitnang ito, okay, again, you can learn that at the eye of the, the tropical cyclone, wind speed is low. But in the dense clouds surrounding the eye, nakapalibot na dito sa clouds, okay, in the dense clouds surrounding the eye, at the eye wall itself, the wind speed is great. 
Ve, tingnan nyo naman, kitang-kita kung gano'ng kalaki. When newspapers report that the tropical cyclone has sustained winds of 200 km per hour, for, for instance, they are referring to the winds at the eye wall. So, kapag may narinig kayong balita na ang sustained winds daw ay 200 km per hour, so, ang tinutukoy nila is yung eye wall. Ano, hindi po yung mata ng bagyo. Okay, and always remember that when the eye of the tropical cyclone passes over a certain time, it it is the winds at the eye wall that wreck a lot of damage. Okay? So, yan. Ang kalimitan talaga nakakasira at nakakadahilan kung bakit nasisira yung mga nasa paligid natin, it's because of the eye wall. Kasi nandyan yung pinakamalakas na wind speed. As it approaches, one side of the eye wall brings strong winds blowing in one direction. Okay, so, then, then comes the eye with its somewhat calm weather. Okay, ka ano lang, payapa lang ang lugar dito sa mata ng bagyo. As it leaves, so kapag umalis na ito, the other side of the eye wall brings strong winds again, but this time in the opposite direction. And I know this is, has already been discussed in our previous module. Okay, next. So in this activity, so you're going to use the latitude and the longitude that long in the table to track the location of Super Typhoon Yolanda. So what you're going to do is to plot each lat long pair on the map with the PAR or the Philippine Area of Responsibility. Okay, so ngayon, tuturuan ko lang kayo kung paano ba natin ipa-plot itong si Typhoon Yolanda. Okay, so kung ito yung table natin, ang kailangan nyo lang naman gawin ay hanapin kung nasan yung latitude at yung nasan yung longitude. So kung saan nag-intersect itong latitude at itong longitude, so doon nyo ilalagay yung inyong point. So for example, ano ba kapag sinabing latitude? So this is yung horizontal line. So itong mga line na to, so yan ang mga yan ang latitude. At kung makikita nyo naman, tingnan nyo yung mga nakasulat dito. So that is north. Tingnan nyo, so north, di ba, sa latitude. Okay, so lahat ng horizontal lines, so those are the latitude. And yung longitude naman, okay, is, tingnan nyo yung mga nasa taas. Okay, pwede rin itong nasa baba. So, ibig sabihin, itong line na to, so yan ang tinatawag natin na longitude. Okay, so paano nyo ngayon isya ipaplat? Okay, hindi pantay ang aking kuhet. So, kung saan yung nahanap itong 11 at itong 124, kung saan siya nag nagtagpo. Okay, so for example, nagtagpo siya dito. So, yung intersection nila, yun yung magiging point natin. Okay, so, in this activity, so I want you na kayo na ngayon ang gagawa nitong activity na to. So, since na ipaliwanag ko na naman sa inyo kung ano yung gagawin ninyo and how you're going to plot each lot long pair on the map with a par. So, I think it's very easy for you to do this. Okay, good luck! Now, what if if the activity is baliktad naman. So, given naman ngayon yung track ng bagyo, but you are the one to determine the latitude and the longitude of the given storm. So, this is an example. So, for example, binigyan ko na kayo ngayon ng table kung saan kita nyo na yung track ng bagyo and then I have given also the date and the time kung kailan siya umarangkada itong bagyo natin. So, and I, I will ask you to give the latitude and the longitude. Okay, madali lang din yan kasi kita na naman natin yung mga point kung alin dyan yung ilolocate ninyo. Okay, what I mean is nakalocate na pala siya pero ibibigay nyo naman sa akin kung nasaan, kung ano yung latlong niya. So, it's very easy kasi alam nyo na naman, di ba, very obvious na kapag horizontal line, so ito yung latitude at usually ito yung north ang direction. And then yung nasa taas, the east, so lahat ng pababang na yan, yan yung long. Okay, so for example, I ask you to give the lat long of 2 a.m. August 26, 2019. Okay, so saan siya nakalocate? So, ito siya, di ba? Okay, nasaan po? Ano po yung lat niyan? La latitude. What is the latitude of this of this point? So, tingnan mo dito sa horizontal line. Saan ba, saan ba siya nakatapat? Okay, so, hindi pa siya saktong 25. So, meaning to say, bago pa siya mag-25. So, meaning to say, this is probably 24 degree north. Now, ano yung longitude naman yan? Okay, pag 
pag imamap mo siya pataas, okay, dahil ang long longitude natin ay vertical line, okay, so ang vertical line niyan tuma tumama siya dito. At kita nyo naman na ito ay 115 going to 120 at nandito siya sa gitna. So, we can assume that this is 116, 117. Okay, kasi hindi pa naman siya super gitna. So, this one, so the lat is 24 degree north and the longitude is 117 degree east. Okay? So, how about this one? Yung point naman nito, 2 a.m. And then, August 25, 2019. How are you going to plot this? Okay, napakadali din yan. Tingnan ulit natin, saan ba siya nakatapat? Okay, malap. Kung ito ay 24, so ibig sabihin, medyo mababa siya ng konti. So, probably this is 23. 23 degree north. And ano yung latitude niyan? Okay, lumampas na siya ng 120, approaching dito. So, 120, 121. So, we have latitude as 23 degree north and the longitude is 121 degree is. Okay, so ganun lang kadali. So, yan, binigyan ko lang kayo ng example para mas madali nyo nang ma-plot itong remaining. Okay? This is the end of our lesson vlog in Science 8, Week 7, Module 7. So, abangan nyo ulit ang ating next discussion. Nasa week 8, module 8 na tayo sa ating next lesson vlog. So, that will be the last topic for our second quarter. It's all about the meteors, comets, and asteroids. So, I hope you learned something from this vlog. If you want to comment, so just leave your comment below. And, syempre, don't forget to subscribe like and hit the notification bell for more updates in Science 8 lalong lalo na kung bago ko pa lang sa channel na ito. So sana ay nakatulong sa inyo ng malaki ang lesson vlog na ito. So good luck congratulations at good luck sa inyong pag-aaral So see you on my next lesson vlog This is me again, Teacher Ting May See you and thank you so much Bye Uy Nakasubscribe ka na ba? Subscribe ka muna Thanks! <laughs>